Welcome to Transporter. My name is David Hill and I write the product documentation at Connected Data. In this video, we are going to go through the first time setup of a business class transporter device. The topics that we are about to cover are creation of a transporter organization, setup of the required administrator accounts, addition of the organization's users, such as employees, and installation of desktop software. We'll start by visiting the Connected Data website. Clicking the Support tab, and scrolling down to the individual product support area. And here's where we keep our admin guide. The material in this tutorial starts in section two. We assume that you've already followed the inbox instructions for physical setup of the device and that it's powered on and connected to your network when we start. Look for the article titled, Transporter Business Create Organization Admin Account Claim. As the administrator, you're going to need two email addresses to get started. The first address should be a new address which you can dedicate exclusively to the administration of your transporter organization. The second email address should be one that you already use that your coworkers know you by. That's the address that you will use for day-to-day -day activities such as syncing and sharing files. Of course, we encourage you to read this entire article, but for purpose of this video, we're going to skip straight down to step five where the actual account creation begins. So today, our administrator is going to be named Douglas and we'll call our organization Connected Data. And we've created a very easy to remember organization admin email address. You might also want to do this. We'll agree to the terms and click sign up. Here you see a few tips about using our transporter management website, which you can read at your own leisure. We'll just skip those for now. And you'll see a message reminding you here that you need to respond to a confirmation email. So I'll switch from the screen to my email, which I've already opened up in the background. And this is what our confirmation emails look like. So I'll click here to confirm and then I'll click done. And now if we go back to our original window, it has indeed refreshed. Now we can see the transporters that are available to claim on our network. We're seeing this little warning at the top because we have both business class and consumer class transporter units available to claim on our network. This just reminds us that on a business account, we must claim the business unit first. So we can safely dismiss this. We've already selected our transporter 30 right here. So we'll be sure that our serial number matches and then we'll click next. And we'll click done. Now we find ourselves in the organization view of the transporter management website, and we have no users. If you want to confirm where you claimed your hardware, you can click the transporter tab here in the left-hand navigation bar, and there we have our transporter 30. And it's empty. We have 7.7 .7 terabytes free. So let's go back to our organization view, and we're going to invite some members. There's two ways you can do this. The first method is email invitation, as covered in this video. The second is Active Directory, which we've covered in a separate knowledge base document. So here I have some fictitious connected data employees. I'm just going to copy all of their addresses and paste them right here. Leave this checked and click Submit. Aha. So this is what you will see if you've accidentally left in the email address of someone who already has a transporter account or who is already in your organization or somebody else's organization. So what I need to do is go back into my list and delete that duplicate address, which is obviously the one that I just used to create my administrator account. Notice too, very important, that Douglas has invited himself at his regular email address right here at the very top, just as you should include your regular email address for creating your organization user account, which you'll use for day-to-day -day function. Now you can see that everyone you invited is a pending user. Everyone will have to check their email accept your invitation by following a link to our website where they can create an account and where they will be prompted to install our desktop software. So the next thing we'll do is return to Douglas's email and follow the invitation to create his organization user account. But before we do, it's a good idea if we log out of the admin site. Now we're back at Douglas's email and we can see the invitation which Douglas has sent to himself. You can see here that this is from his org admin address and he sent it to his standard email address from which he'll create his organization user account. and we agree to the terms again and sign up. Here we have our usage tips again for the website. 
We'll just dismiss those for now. And at this point, you can decide whether you want your name to be searchable in the directory. For your convenience purposes, we recommend that you do, but that's entirely up to you. And with account image, you have the option to add an avatar from one of your social media accounts. So on this screen, you'll see our software download. On a Mac, it will end up in your downloads folder or at your default download location on a PC. I'm going to look here in my downloads folder. There it is. I'll open up the disk image. I'll copy it to my applications folder. Then I will eject the disk image. Go back to my applications folder. And there it is. So we just need to launch the application. Uh, if necessary, authorize it. And then click past the introductory screen. So we agree to our terms and conditions. Enter Douglas's regular email address, which corresponds to the organization user account that he created, and then we'll click login. Here, if you want to keep your transporter folder anywhere other than the default location, you would change the location right here, such as to an external USB drive. Whenever possible, we recommend running it at the default location, so we'll click next and install. This is looking for your macOS 10 password, not to be confused with your transporter password. What you just saw flash by in the background was installing our Finder extension, which we use to provide our custom icons. Here you have a quick explanation of transporter folder versus transporter library. We'll cover that more in depth elsewhere, so we're going to skip that for now. And we're done. We do recommend checking automatically for software updates. In some later versions of the app, you may no longer see that prompt because the check is simply automatic. And here we have the helpful arrow showing us where the transporter menu has been installed in our menu bar. We can click to dismiss that. And you'll find transporter has been added to your sidebar. We'll see my transporter library folder appear here momentarily. And there it is. So at this point, I have an empty transporter folder. So we're going to add some content. I have some things here just waiting that I want to have on the transporter, so I'm going to select them and drag them into the transporter folder. What you see now is the synchronization icons appearing. The folders are going up one by one, and as they turn green, the synchronization is complete. Now anything that I do to the files in this folder will stay in sync with the transporter. Here you can see the status of your synchronization in the transporter menu. This is a very useful feature. And now the computer's up to date. So at this point, Douglas has his first set of files synced to his transporter. He has created an organization administrator account, as well as a standard organization user account, and he's invited his first group of employees to join the transporter organization. At this point, the next steps are for the individual employees to follow the email invitations to create their accounts, for everyone to install the desktop software, and for everyone to add their initial files to start syncing with the transporter. Now we would recommend that you visit our Transporter Quick Start Guide, which you can find at go.filetransporter.com slash quickstart. Thank you for watching.